Hello students, welcome to Learning with Joy. This video is a summary of the 100 Dresses Part 1. The 100 Dresses is written by Elbsor Esther. Born Eleanor Ruth Rosenfield in West Haven, Connecticut, Estes was the third of four children. Her father was a bookkeeper for a railway. Her mother was a seamstress and storyteller. Her father died when she was very young and her mother's dressmaking provided for the family. Eleanor attributes her love of reading, children's literature and storytelling to her parents' fondness for books and her mother's inexhaustible supply of songs, stories and anecdotes with which she entertained us while cooking dinner. Eleanor began writing when tuberculosis left her confined to her bed. Eleanor based the story The Hundred Dresses on her real life experience as the girl who, unbeknownst to Peggy, received Peggy's hand-me-down dresses. She felt so guilty for not having defended the Wanda character in real life that she wrote the story as both an exercise to assuage her guilt and to encourage others to stand up against bullies. Let's begin with the summary. The story is about a young girl by the name of Wanda Petronsky. She is a Polish immigrant who had come to America with her family. Her classmates tease her because she claims to have a hundred dresses of different types lined up in her closet, albeit she always wore a faded blue dress that didn't fit properly. She also claimed that she had 60 pairs of different types of shoes also lined up. The students also thought that her name being different and hard to pronounce was funny. One day, Wanda hadn't come to school. No one had yet noticed her absence as she used to sit in the seat next to the last seat in the last row. That was where the rough boys used to sit and also the place where the most mud and dirt, the loudest laughs and the most scuffling of feet used to be. No one knew why she sat there as, on the contrary, she was a quiet girl, rarely laughed and rarely said anything. The time when Wanda was actually noticed was outside of school hours, where the children used to gather to have fun with her. More than having fun with her, they made fun of her. The children who mainly teased her were two best friends named Peggy and Maddie. Peggy was the most popular girl in school. According to the narrator, she was pretty, had many clothes and had curly hair. Maddie, on the other hand, was a poor girl. She usually wore someone else's hand-me-down clothes. In fact, she wore Peggy's hand-me-downs. When the others would tease Wanda, Maddie was always anxious, thinking that if she had had a funny name like Wanda's or lived in a poor locality like Boggins Heights where Wanda lived, the girls would start to tease her too. Maggie wished that Peggy and the others would stop teasing Wanda Petronsky, but she didn't have the courage to do anything about it. The next day too, Wanda hadn't showed up to school. On Wednesday, however, 
Wanda's absence was noticed by Peggy and Maggie as they had waited to make fun of her but she didn't show up and they became late for school Maddie was relieved that they didn't get to make fun of Wanda the same day she had decided to write a note to Peggy stating that they stopped mocking Wanda she quickly changed her mind as she pictured herself in the schoolyard as a new target for Peggy and the others to make fun of Maddie then remembered Wanda telling them about one of her dresses that was pale blue with colored trimmings later she remembered another dress that was brilliant jungle green with a red sash the girls had said that Wanda would look like a christmas tree in that dress Maddie also mentions that the winners of the drawing and coloring contest were going to be announced the next day the girls had to design various dresses and the boys had to design motorboats Wanda knew that Peggy would win as she was the best artist in room 13 the next day it was drizzling naturally on a day like this Maddie and Peggy didn't wait for Wanda and instead hurried off to school the minute they had entered the classroom they had to stop and catch their breath there were drawings of dresses in dazzling colors and lavish designs on every ledge and window sill they were all drawn on sheets of wrapping paper after settling down miss mason the class teacher announced the winners jack beggles had won in the boys group and his design along with the sketches of the other boys were in room 12 as for the girls most girls had submitted about one or two sketches except this one girl who had submitted a hundred of them all different and all beautiful and in the opinion of the judges any one of these drawings were capable of winning miss mason then announced the name of the girl who won the prize the one who drew the 100 dresses it was wanda petronsky hearing this the children started applauding the boys got a chance to stomp their feet and whistle even though they weren't really interested in the dresses maddie noticed the blue dress that wanda had told them about and peggy saw the green one that she had also told them about unfortunately as wanda hadn't attended school she was unable to receive the prize the teacher hoped she would attend class the next day now there's an underlying theme that's running through this story and that is do not judge many a time we judge people we judge people based on the dresses they wear the clothes that they wear the, the language that they speak the country that they come from or the state that they come from we judge them because of their religion because of their race because of the color of their skin now this happens many a time even at the school level and that is what we should stop doing now we can either be in the category of the people who are actually bullying others actually judging and making others feel humiliated or we may be in the second category where we are going along with these kind of people who are humiliating others now there is also a third category where we are silent spectators when this is happening just like maddie was and we do not say anything we do not do anything about it this story tells us all that we should not judge we should not bully we should not be prejudiced against people if they are not like us i hope you understood this summary thank you for learning with joy be joyful and be blessed